Hi and welcome to part 2 of our video on parts of speech. In this concluding part, we shall cover yet another 12 figures of speech that are commonly used in English language. The figures covered in this video lesson are based on putting together contrasting ideas or carefully selecting words for emphasizing certain ideas, sometimes even by repeating words and phrases to this effect. First, let's cover the figures based on contrast or opposing ideas juxtaposed together. The first figure based on contrast is antithesis. As a literary device, antithesis is whenever two opposite ideas are put together in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect. One of the best examples of antithesis is the words spoken by Neil Armstrong, an American astronaut and the first person to walk on the moon. This is one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Note that the words small step and giant leap are totally opposite or antithesis of each other. Another good example is the quote of Satan in John Milton's Paradise Lost. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Here the words reign which means rule and serve are antithetical and so are the words hell and heaven. And as an outstanding and unforgettable example, we have the opening lines from Charles Dickens' novel A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. and yet we had nothing before us we were all going direct to heaven we were all going direct the other way the antithetical ideas and words are marked in yellow serving as an introduction to the novel the contrasting ideas set in parallel structures markedly highlight the conflict that existed in that time which was discussed in the novel antithesis can also be used simply as a word to mean opposite thus war is the antithesis of peace kindness is the antithesis of cruelty and love is the antithesis of hatred angels are the antithesis of demons etc we are surrounded by antithetical thoughts and ideas all the time so i will give one last example of antithesis from a real life situation and that's a manager in a company thinking Since I get much less than my share of credit for the successes, why should I take any more than my share of blame for the failures? The second figure of speech that we are going to discuss is a paradox. A paradox is a statement that appears to be absurd or self-contradictory but is actually valid or true. A paradox is a food for thought. For instance, Let's take the popular saying the child is the father of the man. This puzzling line is credited to William Wordsworth. Now, on first look, one wonders how could a child be a father? But on deeper reflection, we see the truth. The poet is saying that the childhood habits and experiences become the basis for all adult occurrences. The childhood of a person shapes his personality and his life and consequently fathers or creates the grown up adult so child is father of the man is a paradox which actually has a hidden but profound meaning and in fact there are many such philosophical statements some of them are so commonplace banal and trite because they are so frequently used that they may not seem a paradox anymore one such example is change is the only constant in life it's confusing for sure because constant is something that never changes but the sentence says that change is inevitable and is bound to happen in life it has become another cliche to speak of india as a land of paradoxes said the cambridge economist john robinson 
whatever you can rightly say about india the opposite is also true so let's talk about some real and relatable examples of how opposites coexist in our society here in india it's a paradox that the second most populous country in the world with a population of 125 million is so pluralistic multiethnic and multilingual eight religions and 23 officially recognized languages and yet people coexist peacefully and live together harmoniously with a shared sense of nationality like no other place in the world though we do have our share of challenges each of which is a paradox in itself for instance it is difficult to digest the fact that we have some of the richest people on the planet but a staggering 276 million people are below poverty line in india unable to pay for two square meals a day a quarter of hungry people worldwide live in india and 44% of children below the age of 5 are malnourished and underweight it's a paradox that we educate the brightest minds in the iits and the iims who go forth to become the ceos of companies such as google and microsoft and yet are unable to provide basic and primary education to a huge number of our children who either never attend school or drop out of school it's a paradox that in india bullock carts are still an indispensable mode of transportation for millions but our rocket and satellite programs are amongst the most advanced on earth it's a paradox that we are a nuclear technology empowered nation and yet many villages in india do not have access to electricity and even in metros there are severe electricity cuts for several hours daily here is another contradictory image of india you can see a sadhu clad in a dhoti and holding his kamandal and yet smoking a cigarette and talking on his mobile phone that's the paradoxical image defining contemporary india well sometimes the word paradox could also be used for a person or thing that combines contradictory features or qualities for instance a particular female could be called a paradox if she loves being in the public eye but also deeply values and protects her privacy now let us move to our third figure irony which is one of the most commonly used figures of speech in english well irony is a situation that is strange or funny because things happen in a way that seems to be the opposite of what you expected like consider the sentence nothing is written in stone written over a stone that's irony because it is just the opposite of what you expected when there is a mismatch between the expectations that something would happen and something else happens instead in reality you call it situational irony there is a beautiful example of this one from one of the jokes i read earlier a child was born in an indian family and the father made an astrologer predict his future after great deliberations the astrologer replied he will grow up to be the center of attraction he will be surrounded by luxury cars and vehicles at all times and will be the guiding light for others needless to say the family was filled with immense joy and pride the irony of the prediction is that the child grew up to be a traffic police inspector and so was surrounded by cars at all times and was indeed a guide but for routing traffic such happenings are called situational irony one remarkable example of irony would be that of politicians who are supposed to respect and uphold the sanctity of their portfolios making a complete mockery of the system now without naming any political party or person consider two examples the minister of law and justice gets arrested over a fake law degree and the women and child development minister of delhi is sacked for secretly filming a woman in objectionable state and violating her privacy you don't expect the law and justice minister to have violated laws so blatantly neither do you expect the minister of women and child development 
to have such disrespect for women these are instances of situational irony for you the other type of irony is verbal irony where one speaks just the opposite of what one really thinks here i would quote an example from the movie mean girls where there is this girl called regina who compliments her classmate on her dress and says oh my god i loved your skirt where did you get it so the girl replies it was my mom's in the 80s regina does not stop at that she further remarks that it is vintage so adorable once when the girl is out of sight we come to see regina's true reaction when she says that's the ugliest skirt i have ever seen so the example of regina paying a false compliment to her classmate is verbal irony by the way the word irony must remind you of the iron and so here is one custom example of irony where the iron boat is asked how does he like his job and the worn out grumpy iron boat says yeah i love my job making clothes flat note the irony in the tone since we have discussed both paradox and irony the key difference that will help you tell one from another is that in irony there exists a mismatch or incongruity between what is expected and what occurs but a paradox is a clear contradiction it is like a logical puzzle where the statement may seem weird but actually turns out to be true or valid irony examples are also found in poems for example in the poem the rhyme of the ancient mariner coleridge wrote water water everywhere and all the boats did shrink water water everywhere not any drop to drink in the above stated lines the ship blown by the south wind is stranded in the uncharted sea ironically there is water everywhere but they do not have a single drop of water to drink as we all know that sea water is unpotable next we are going to discuss chiasmus chiasmus a literary device is a very smart word play in which words grammatical constructions or concepts are repeated in reverse order in fact the literal meaning of the word chiasmus is a crosswise arrangement or reverse arrangement a very good example is never let a fool kiss you or a kiss fool you here one would note that the ideas are not really opposite as happens in an antithesis and even the words chosen are the same just the word order is reversed in the two clauses which are balanced against each other to create an artistic effect another beautiful example is the saying one must eat to live and not live to eat so don't be a glutton and one contemporary example is the quote from hillary clinton the presidential candidate in the united states that in the end the true test is not the speeches a president delivers it is whether the president delivers on the speeches next we will move on to the figures of speech based on the word choice or word order this type is one of the most commonly used and interesting figures of speech in english they are used with an intention of emphasizing some point and are regularly used in speeches both formal and informal apart from literature the first of this type is a hyperbole hyperbole is an exaggerated statement or claim which is not meant to be taken literally for example let us suppose you meet one of your friends after a while maybe after days or weeks or even months and you say i haven't met you for ages now the word ages stands for a very long time maybe centuries so it's a hyperbole another example is when you are a little stressed and overworked and you exclaim i am dealing with a million issues these days well million is a very huge number which will certainly not match the number of issues you are dealing with which are maybe a dozen realistically speaking and the last example is if i hear any more music i will go deaf it's a hyperbole 
because nobody goes deaf by hearing more music. I have attempted to provide you with a visual mnemonic for a hyperbole where a cat looks into a mirror and thinks that he is a lion. The exact opposite of hyperbole is an understatement. An understatement is when you say that something is smaller or less important than it really is. For example, saying that having your leg broken is somewhat painful is an understatement because a fracture is perhaps one of the worst and most painful experiences. And saying that Bill Gates is financially secure whereas in fact, he is one of the richest men in the world and buying a new Audi will set you back a few bucks. Audi is a car that majority cannot afford at all. It does not set the buyer back by a few bucks but rather drains the majority of savings. All these are examples of understatement. Next, we have the figure light Ds. This figure is also sometimes known as meiosis. This figure of speech has shades of both irony and an understatement. In lighter T's, we express an affirmative statement by negating its contrary statement. For instance, if a boy enjoying his ice cream says, this ice cream is not bad, what he means is that the ice cream is rather good or at least okay in taste. Another example is drawing the long bow now drawing the long bow is also an idiom but here we are using it in literal sense that is drawing the long bow to shoot an arrow is no mean feat. Those who have used a long bow know that it requires a lot of effort to shoot an arrow on it. So in saying that it is not an average feat, I am in fact saying that it is an outstanding feat. Yet another example for light T's is when you say that someone is hardly an Einstein, which is the same as saying that guy or girl is not the brightest bulb on the tree. The statement actually means that that guy or girl is not smart at all and rather is dumb. Let us move on to word order for emphasis wherein we repeat certain words or phrases for emphasizing a point. The most important figure of this type is anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a word or phrase at the very beginning of successive phrases, clauses or sentences. Look at this profound quote of Ralph Waldo Emerson exemplifying this figure of speech. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Note that the phrase what lies is repeated at the beginning of successive clauses. That's anaphora. And here is one example that no one skips when talking about anaphora. It is a I have a dream speech delivered by Martin Luther King where he spells out his hopes and expectations. The phrase I have a dream was repeated eight times in this iconic speech at the beginning of successive sentences. The exact counterpart of anaphora is epiphora or epistrophe where the repetition of the word is not at the beginning but at the end of successive phrases or clauses. And the best example of an epistrophe is how we define democracy. Democracy is a government of the people, by the people and for the people. Note that the words the people are repeated at the end of successive phrases. That's epistrophe. Another example is when I was a kid, I thought as a kid, I understood as a kid and I spoke as a kid. Here the words a kid are repeated at the end of successive clauses. Our next figure of speech is a rhetorical question. As the name suggests, a rhetorical question is a question posed to provoke a thought rather than to generate an answer. This type of question may have an implied or obvious answer that the reader or the listener already knows. For example, here is a miffed parent talking to his son saying, does money grow on trees? 
I'm sure the boy and every one of us knows the answer to that question. Is an obvious one a resounding no? The question is asked just to emphasize the point that money does not grow on trees. Sometimes there may be no answer at all for a rhetorical question. Like, let's suppose it's a hot summer afternoon and you tell your friend, it's too hot today, isn't it? The isn't it part of the sentence is known as a question tag. Well, no answer is required or expected for such a question as you already know the answer and you just want to emphasize the fact that it's very hot. Moving closer to the end of this video, we have the figure of speech called climax. By the way, climax also means the ending part. The word climax shares its roots with words such as climb and these originated from the Greek term climax meaning ladder. Just like a ladder, climax signifies gradual step-by-step -step movement where you reach higher with every successive step that you take. In Climax, a series of ideas is arranged in order of increasing importance or forcefulness. For example, there is this wonderful victory quote by the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, which he sent to the Roman Senate. It goes like, Veni vidi visi, and means, I came, I saw, and I conquered. Note that the words come, saw, conquer, are in increasing order of importance. A climax is the most intense, exciting or important point of something and is also called the culmination. In normal conversations, we often talk about climax of movies etc. It's the most important part of the movie because the whole plot of the movie builds up towards it. An anticlimax, on the other hand is a disappointing end to an exciting or impressive series of events. Here, I would like to give you one of the well-known examples of an anticlimax, that of Alexander the Great, the undefeated general who had a winning streak across most of Asia. He had sought to reach the ends of the world but was taken ill at Babylon and died at a young age without being able to execute his plans. That was the normal meaning and let's discuss anticlimax as a figure of speech now. As a figure of speech, an anticlimax is a sudden transition in discourse from an important idea to a ridiculous or trivial one. Let's see some example sentences. The first one is, in that terrible accident, he lost his family, his car and his stylish watch. We see a decreasing order of importance here as the most important thing is the family, followed by the car, and the stylish watch is the least important here. You may think that the watch should not have found a mention in this tragedy, but perhaps it has its own significance, as I feel that the mention of the stylish watch is a sudden jolt to the reader or the listener. It brings a lighter note to the conversation and helps diffuse the tension. Other examples of an anticlimax are the infrastructure fund finances multilateral projects such as toll roads, railway and airport facilities and even public toilets. And the extract from Woody Allen's speech to graduates goes like this. The contemporary man has seen the ravages of war. He has known natural catastrophes. He has been to singles bars. As you can see, a decreasing order of importance as facing wars and natural catastrophes compare nowhere with being to singles bars. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. If you liked it, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel. There is a lot of other stuff related to English vocabulary on our channel which I am sure will keep you interested. And thank you for your interest.